the sense that the notion of bringing science and art together is really exciting. And most people, I think in this culture, assume that artists and scientists are diametrically opposed. That artists are dreamers and that scientists are realists. And I would say that the discipline of both scientists and artists starts with the direct observation of nature. And that's where I started with this work and actually studied many um, aspects of entomology and, and had regular conversations with an entomologist that helped this work evolve to where it is. And I would, because we're going to keep this short so that you can enjoy the afternoon and not have an academic lecture, I'd invite you to take a look at this book downstairs. There's a essay by a um, Barbara Klochko who puts the work in its scientific um, uh, context in the history of photography. There are 64 plates um, that um, show the work and then at the end the scientist that I work with, Linda Wiener, who's an entomologist who used to be at um, Harvard, um, talks about the philosophy of entomology. She actually, I mean, just like I'm assumed to be a dreamer, what happens to a scientist when they've been in their field for 40 years, they become dreamers. And so she has this whole wonderful essay about the more metaphysical implications of her study with insects, which I find captivating. And I, in my conversations with her, my work changed, absolutely changed. So that some of these pieces, which I would invite you to ask me about later, like with the people, actually come from working with Linda. And then finally, at the end of the book, I have an essay which talks about how this work is done and what my sources are in creating this work. So um, in the end, um, the insects are about the, they are a symbol in the 18th century of the fleeting nature of life. The Vanitas paintings, that's where I started. And that those, when you come down to it, all we have are the magic moments of our life, like the, um, next few days that we're going to share together, which is you know, a momentous moment in our shared cultural history. The purpose of exhibitions of this nature is to explore the nexus between um, art, culture, science, uh, medicine, and uh, technology. Um, there's a, a growing number of artists who are interested in, in these areas of discipline and discourse, and it provides a very interesting uh, platform for discussion of not only uh, science, but uh, how it impacts culture. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's kind of, in a nutshell, what we're, what we're about here within the cultural programs. So you're almost a hybrid in a sense. I mean, you're looking at the scientific angle, but you're looking at the creative angle. Et well, exactly, exactly. So it, it, it provides a different perspective on uh, sort of a traditional view of science. Hmm. So the interesting thing and the wonderful thing about this is that when you have these exhibitions, they're open to the public. Exactly. They're free and open to the public. Wow. All the time. Yes. So people really should take advantage of this. I mean, this oh, we, we welcome anybody in the neighborhood or in the region, um, and uh, we can be... Uh, more information can be found on our website, which is uh, nationalacademies.org forward slash arts. Okay. And the best part is that we want to mention this, not only is it free, mm -hmm. but you often treat people to a taste of uh, some very good snacks when they come right, by. Right, the receptions so, uh, yes. as well. So we're, we're always welcoming uh, of, our, 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 of the public uh, in any form uh, that we can welcome them. Uh, lectures, concerts. Uh, art exhibitions, uh, film series, uh, online symposiums, um, almost always uh, free, and uh, come have a, a drink and a bite to eat. And the building is conveniently located in Northwest D.C.? The address is 2101 Constitution Avenue. Mm -hmm. uh, we're the closest building uh, to the Lincoln Memorial, right mm -hmm. on Constitution Avenue, mm -hmm. uh, right on the mall. And we got a big crowd in here today, and Absolutely. Uh, it seems to be a lot of buzz going on in this neighborhood near Absolutely. the Lincoln Memorial. Absolutely, great energy, and we're just so glad that people have chosen uh, to spend a little bit of this historical week with us. Hey, Ms. Uh, sure. wait, first of all, welcome to Washington, D.C. Oh, thank you. What a it's great It's good to have you here. here. Your timing is perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's great. Uh, the, the style of this is classic in a sense that it could have been done 20 years ago, of course, as you mentioned, with a film-based system. Yeah. 
but the juxtaposition in terms of how you're taking urban fabric, which is man-made, with nature, where, where's the theme and, and what's that, what does that stand for in terms of how you're living and what you're looking at society doing? Well, what I'm really doing as an artist is holding a mirror up to our reality. Mm -hmm. And if you look at our reality, we're in this world of betwixt and between. The, you know, we have the natural world on one side, but the major population has moved to these urban environments, mm -hmm. which are man-made. Mm -hmm. The urban environment is totally constructed and mm -hmm. artificial. And what's happened is that we're now... You know, there's this kind of schism and, and um, that where the line of interface between the urban world and the natural world is showing some, um, what do we call it, tectonic plate shifting? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so what I'm trying to do with this work is just kind of reflect the issues without making a judgment call.